crashes over me, crashes over me, for you are for us. it says when Jesus spoke again to the people he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have the light of life John 1 it says in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not here to tell you today that whatever darkness you may be facing in your life, you can hide it in the light of Jesus. He will walk you through whatever that looks like. Put your trust in him today and walk it out. Accept that light in your life. He's with you. There's no darkness in your eyes. There's no question in your mind, God Almighty, God of mercy. There's no hiding from your faith. There's no striving in your grace, God of mercy, God Almighty. Let there be light, open the eyes of the blind, pure Purify our hearts in your fire. Breathe in us, we pray. Jesus, have your way. There's no borders in your love, no division in your heart, God of heaven, God of freedom. There's no taking back the cross.
the light that shines above become the light that shines in us there's no darkness in your way so have your way so have your So I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in awe of the one who gave it all. I'll stand, my soul, Lord, to you surrendered all I am is yours.
Lord, we belong to you. You have chosen us. You knit us together in our mother's womb. You set us apart. God, we can look to you no matter what it is that we face, no matter what despair, no matter what brokenness, what suffering we, we may be walking through, God. We're good amidst all of it. We can hide ourselves in our troubles in the name of Jesus. There is no darkness and light. And we fully surrender and step into that light this morning, Lord. We open ourselves up. The depths of our souls, God, we just give you access to that. Lord, speak to us. Move through us. Tell us who we are. God, we can look to you for anything. We're so grateful that we get to be called your kids, your children. Above all else, you have chosen us as your children. And we just give you all the honor and all the glory because you are worthy. God, we give you this time. We love you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And here's Pastor Kurt with the message. Thanks, Mikey. Pastor Mikey. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Good. Glad you're here. Special welcome to you if it's your first time here. We are in our dream series, and we're going to talk about why dreams matter, and I really hope and pray by the time this series is over that dreams are coming to life to you because that's what God intends for them to do, and we're going to talk about that today. <clears throat> At the noon service, super pumped to have Than Motsering, and a big congratulations to him. He just got his pastoral license this week. So he's, he's legit now. Everything he said before this, you can just write off, but now, just kidding, I'm kidding. No, he's awesome, and so super excited for those guys and what God has in store for them. Um, this series, after this series, we're going to be doing a series on sacred pathways, building intimacy with God, the eight ways that God have created us to do that. Then we're going to do a series on spiritual weapons, and all of these series are uh, meant to go towards the direction of our vision statement, which is a church family empowering our community to live in Jesus Christ, and our mission statement to connect, grow, serve, and deploy. So that's what we're going to do today. If you want to grab your handout, we're going to fill that out together as we look at hearing God, um, but more specifically through our dreams. We all dream, and God has a plan and a reason for that. Alyssa did a great job last week talking about why dreams are um, valid. And throughout the scriptures, God has used dreams. And um, one thing that dreams and visions in the Bible, the word dreams and the word visions are interchangeable. So typically a vision is when you're awake. You have a kind of a vision of something that's just kind of a download. And then typically when you're sleeping, it's called, you know, a, a dream. So, but they're interchangeable in the Hebrew and the Greek and the Bible, but they're ways that God wants to speak to us. So let me ask you this question. Have you ever had a dream that's come true? Usually what I should ask is, has anybody had a dream that hasn't, that has never had a dream that's come true? Most people have had a dream that's come true in some way or form. And it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting um, fact of life. As a matter of fact, I've had a dream, I've had several dreams come through since I was little, all the way through my rebellious years, through my partying, through my recommitment to Christ, becoming a pastor, and marrying my wife. I had three dreams about who Lisa was before I met her. And now we have five kids. And I tell you what, dreams, I married way up. But, um, the, uh, but dreams are valid. And, and unfortunately, a lot of times what we do is we shut off this avenue of communication from God. It would be like me saying, I'm going to get rid of my phone and then good luck finding me. How would you talk to somebody without a phone? Right? And a lot of people do this, right? They get out of them and become mountain men and live out, and that's what you are. If you, you, don't, you can't find you. You have to f send you a letter, if you know your address, or you have to actually physically go and find you. And that's sometimes what we do to God, is we shut off avenues for him to speak to us, and we say, you can only speak to me this way. And I don't know about you, but I talk to a lot of people who say, I can't hear God. I don't know how to hear God. And we're going to talk about that 
today, but God has spoke to me all the way throughout my life through dreams, and I encourage you as we talk about this this morning to apply if you want to hear God through your dreams, because he wants to do it. But our culture is enamored with dreams. There is movie after movie after movie that is coming out about dreams, and God, I think God is using every avenue in our, in our world to try to speak to us. If we'll just listen and, and figure out the ways. That's why this next series on sacred pathways is going to be really helpful. But, but dreams are one of those ways. And so think about movies that have to do with dreams. Last, uh, I have a picture. Last uh, week, Alyssa showed a video clip from Field of Dreams. And there's all Inception, Total Recall, Alice in Wonderland, Wizard of Oz. These are all dream movies. And past, current, and future, they are going to do this because God is using even movies to speak to us. Matter of fact, Field of Dreams, if, I don't know if you know this, but next year, in the next baseball season, what's going to happen? Playing. Who's playing? Yankees. Yankees and the White Sox are playing at where the movie took place. They're going to build 8,000 seats and sell tickets and pack it out. That's exactly what happened in the movie, in a sense. But dreams, God is using movies. And how about music? Okay, I want to do something. I, I, I need two volunteers. If you would like a free refill coffee drink, I need two volunteers to help me. So come on up quick. I'll take a microphone. And I'm gonna, we're going to do a little game. It's going to be New Song Church's version of Let's Name That Tune. Name That Tune. If you're old enough... Then come on up here. If you're old enough to remember that, that, that game show. Okay, one on this side, one on this side. He's ready to fill it up. Okay, so I, I, what we're going to do is name that tune. And all of these movies, are, are, all these songs have the word dream in it. So don't guess the word, the song name is dream. Because they all have that word, okay, in it. But there's more to it. So some of them are really old. Some of them are more current. So... We're going to play, so all you guys got to do is I'm going to play some beats, and then you guys are just going to guess, okay? And, and, and then you get a free drink card, both of you. So, okay, so let's play the first one now. Everybody listen. This is an oldie. Oh, this is Everly Brothers. What's the name of the song? No, it's, I told you, this is not just dream. <laughs> Any guesses? Anybody out here? All I have to do is dream. Okay, that's the first one. Okay, so you get the drink card maybe. Okay, let's go to the next one. A little more current. Rock and roll. Don't say anything. You guys have got to guess first. She's got big lips. Big hair. Nope. That's not the, doesn't have the word dream in it. <laughs> okay, guess. Dream on. Dream on, Aerosmith. Okay, let's go to the next one. Shh. Mama and Papa's. <laughs> California, California dream, man. All right, good job. Okay. Really back, uh, <laughs> yeah. Hey, the first service was worse. Okay, but you guys are helping, so that's team effort. Okay, let's do the next one. This is a girl band. Heart. <laughs> you have to wait till they see the lyrics, man. Right? That doesn't help. All right, help them out. These dreams by heart, okay? Good job. Okay, you win, kind of. Okay, let's go to the next one. Halloween. <laughs> Good guess, though. When I close my eyes. <laughs> No guesses? Anybody? Gary? Gary, Gary, right, Dreamweaver. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here's an oldie. Here's an oldie. The monkeys? 
What? Daydream believer. Good job. Okay, good job. And what do we got? How many more we got? One more. One more. Here we go. This is a current song. Kind of country. Girl. Jesus, take the word wheel, girl. Carrie Underwood. It's kind of a sad song. It's about a couple who is planning to get married. The fiance goes to war. It's killed before they come back. Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Just a dream. Good job. You were at the first service. Oh, you knew that. You know the song. Okay. All right. Give these guys a round of applause for coming up and playing our game. Hey, you want to take this down for me? Yeah. So movies are huge. Music is huge. What is God trying to get through to us? Dreams matter. Don't just settle for a song and a movie. How about let's use it the way that God intended. So he's using these things to try to get through to us. And we just have to decide a couple of things. Again, I've heard a lot of people say, I just don't hear God. Listen, if you are a follower of Christ, that does not make sense. If you're a follower of Christ, you hear God. But I don't. Well, well let's talk about that. Because there is a way to do this. All of these series, especially today, is all about our word of the year. Pursue the promise. God wants to speak to us and draw us to himself. Joshua 1.9, the verse that goes along with us for our years. Have I not commanded to be strong and courageous? In order to listen to God and hear him and dis discern him and then actually get the right interpretation, it takes courage. Be strong and courageous. Have I not commanded to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. A lot of people, the reason that they're afraid of their dreams or discouraged by their dreams, because they're not interpreting it right or they don't know how. And I will be with you wherever you go, right? So God wants to be with us, but he also wants to speak to us. And that's why verse number one, or, or uh, uh, on your outline, Roman number, number one, is how do we hear God? In order to hear God, Roman number one, in order to hear God, there's three things that we have to believe. It's on your outline. In order to hear God, first thing, believe God speaks to us today. You have to believe that God is, wants to speak to us. Because if you believe this, if you confess, I believe God wants to speak to me, it's going to increase your awareness. And you're going to have uh, your, your sentence heightened and be ready. But look at this verse in John 10, 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. They, so if you're a follower of Christ, God is speaking to you. But why wouldn't we hear the distractions of this world, the craziness of, the, of this world, and just not being trained in how to hear God? Mother Teresa, before she died, she was interviewed. And they said, hey, Mother Teresa, do you pray? And she said, oh, yes, I love praying. I pray all the time. I pray. And they go, oh, really? What do you say? And she said, oh, nothing. And they went, what? What do you mean, oh, nothing? And they said, okay, okay, okay. Well, wait, wait. Does God talk to you? Does God talk to you? Oh, yes, he talks to me all the time. It's so wonderful and lovely, just so encouraging and comforting. It's so great. And they're like, what does he say? And she said, oh, nothing. And they went, what? How can that be? And she said, if you don't know what I mean, I can't explain it to you. God is speaking to us all the time. And not to contradict Mother Teresa, but we can explain it to us. There is a way to hear God. And one of them, the ways, is through dreams. But a lot of times dreams, the reason that we... We discount dreams as we misunderstand the purpose of them. Dreams are meant to help us. Most dreams. There's two types of dreams. Foretelling and forthtelling, just like prophecy. Foretelling is future. Stuff in the future. Foretelling is your current life and how to have balance. Anybody struggle with balance? Okay. Uh, most dreams are forthtelling. They're, they're trying to bring balance in your life. So if you have a real powerful dream where you're like beating people up, killing people, and just slaughtering people, and you're just super masculine, and you wake up and you're like, oh my goodness, I would never do that. It's probably, the dream is probably trying to tell you that in your life you're maybe being a little too aggressive. You need to just chill out a little bit. Be a little nicer to your wife and to your children and to your people and to your neighbor and to the person who cuts you off. 
And the reverse of that is true too. If you're being tra- chased in a dream and people are beating you up and you're, you can't defend yourself and you, and you wake up and I'm like, I'm not like that. I, I'm, I've got a backbone. Maybe God's trying to say, you know what? Maybe you need to be a little firmer in life and not be just a carpet mat for people to roll, a doormat for people to roll over. So there's all kinds of purposes in dreams. But again, God is speaking to us. We just have to ask ourselves, do I believe it? That's number one. Number two is we have to, if we really want to increase our chances to learn from dreams, number two, we have to record what he says. You have to write it down. If somebody came to you with some very important instructions and said, okay, listen, Kurt, I got to tell you something here. It's really important. What do we usually do? Let me write that down. <laughs> That's really important. If you want to increase your, uh, your, your chances of hearing God and then actually applying what he says, write it down. Habakkuk 2.2. 2. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets. They had to carve it into tablets. <laughs> we have pens and papers and phones and technology. It's way easier for us. So I encourage you to do that. Last Thursday and Friday... We were at the Global Leadership Summit. It's two days of super intense leadership material. It's great, awesome, fun stuff. But all these speakers share. And one of them was this guy. His name is Zhejing. And he, he's, he's, a, he's hilarious, for one. But he was depressed, suicidal, felt like he could never do anything right in life, and was always rejected and feared rejection horribly. And he just wanted to quit. He was just felt, he felt like he had this little six-year-old kid in his shoulder saying, you can't do it. You're pathetic. You're never going to amount to anything. Like that. And he was so re- scared of rejection. So he Googled how to face rejection. And they said, take 100 days and try to be rejected every day. Intentionally do stuff that you're going to be rejected by. So he'd go to a cop sitting in a cop car and he said, hey, can I drive your car? <laughs> he, he did it for 100 days. By the end of the 100 days... He wasn't afraid of rejection anymore. And all of a sudden, guess what the crazy thing is, is the people, the cop cars, that he's going up and say, can I drive them? They say, you know, I've never been asked that. Sure, come on in. <laughs> and they didn't let him drive, but they let him use all the buttons and all the stuff. And I could go on and on and on about the story. But listen, listen, the reason I tell you that story is this. This guy who was lost, dysfunctional, depressed, had nothing going for him. You know what changed everything? He had five dreams and told him to do this. And he was like, that's crazy. But it was God. He's a Christian. He goes around doing all of this, talking to people, entrepreneur, and he always telling people about Jesus who speaks to us. But it was funny because when they introduced him and when he was introducing his talk, he's, that part where he said, oh, I had five dreams. That's kind of why I did all this. That's all he said. And I'm like, wait a minute. Stop right there. You've you got to tell us a little more about those five dreams. Like, what is that? But this is the danger in our culture, is we have become very much about psychology and philosophy. And the danger is, is when we become about philosophy and psychology, is we can exchange that for what is spiritual and what is biblical and what God throughout the ages has meant for us to be learning. We have an overload of information and that's great. I'm all about education, philosophy, psychology. I, I love it. I love it. Get education. I think we should. But get the right education, right, for your, for your future, for your life, and for eternity. And God wants and has always and will always speak to us through dreams. But this Zhejiang, he wrote it down. He wrote a hundred things that he was going to do every day to get rejected by and then he showed some pictures, some video clips. One of them was he went to a guy's house dressed up as a soccer player, put with a soccer ball, went to some random guy's house, knocked on the door, and he said, hey, um, can I play soccer in your backyard? <laughs> and the guy went, well, you're all dressed, and I guess you should. And he let him go play. This is at the end of the 100 days. He was like, everybody's saying yes to me. What the heck? Anyway, but it was five dreams. He wrote wrote them down, and he followed through. So number one, believe that he speaks. Number two, record it. Write it down. Number three is meditate on what he says. And this is what this guy did. Is he meditated on it, and he wrote it down, and he said, I'm going to do this. I can't lose. I can't get any worse. I'm worse as I can be. I might as well try it. And I, unfortunately, that's a lot of times what we do with God. Is we're like, well, I've tried everything else. I guess I'll try God. And God should be first, not last. But the challenge with meditating is to carve out time. 
And, and a psycholo a psychologically, we can think meditation is like some Eastern religion and some other weird whatever. Meditation is very, very biblical, but it does take us to carve out time to get alone and to just listen to what God has said to us, write it down, and then meditate on it. That's our next series on Sacred Pathways. We're going to talk about that. Uh, the, song, the verse for number under the third there is Psalms 119, 148. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. God has, throughout all history, has used it, but we, have, we, we can lose this if we're not careful. Matter of fact, one of the reasons that I'm a pastor is because of a dream. I'm an evangelist. Like, if I, if I know somebody that doesn't believe in Jesus, I'm like, just like a magnet. I'm like, what? How can you not believe in Jesus? Tell me about it. I just want to know about what, why they think this way, and I want to know. I want to find a way into their heart so I can plant the seed of the gospel. And that sometimes makes me a bad pastor. Because I look at people that are saved, I'm like, well, you're saved, so i got to get out of my way. i got to find someone that doesn't save. So it doesn't always translate well as a pastor. I love you all. But, but, but you know why I'm like that? I had a dream once. My dad, my mom and dad are here today. And they, my dad can attest to this. One night, I had a dream. I woke up from, it was early in the morning, actually. And I was, tell me if you remember this. And I was crying so profusely from this dream that people were going to hell. I could barely talk. I called my dad and I was like, <laughs> my dad's like, you need to talk to a pastor and get some help. Man, do you remember that? <laughs> and so, but this is why I'm an evangelist. I'm not better than anybody else, but a dream influenced me in such a way that I want everybody to know Jesus because hell is real. And I had a dream that was so vivid that I was like, I, I don't want anybody I know to go there. It's a bad place. And so dreams, again, throughout my whole life have helped direct me, motivate me, and God wants to do that for all of us. So to help with some of this, there's a ton of good books out there, but two I recommend. Actually, it's one, but it's two editions, so it's the same book. But it's called Dream Interpretation of Biblical Understanding. And this is Herman Riffle. He's, he, he passed away at the age of 93, 10 years ago, wrote this really cool, concise book. Um, that's great. You can't, they can't, they don't print them anymore. So you have to buy them used online. And I love buying used books because look at this. <laughs> you get notes in there from people that are talking about stuff and it's always interesting. But anyway, but if you want to get a good resource, this book, if you can find it, is really a good little resource. But listen, listen, when I go to Kentucky Fried Chicken, I eat the chicken and I spit out the bones. So do you. That's how you read a book. Eat the chicken, spit out the bones. If there's something in there like, I don't know if I agree with that. It doesn't seem biblical. I don't know if it gels with me. Just skip it. Throw it out and just move on. Don't get hung up on something. But again, there's a lot of good resources out there. There's a ton of them out there. On, on, but listen, listen. They have to be biblical. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Why they have to be biblical. When we do not, when we are not in the spirit God's in plan of uh, what we're supposed to learn and apply. What it does, listen, is it can create a spiritual vacuum. And when you have a spiritual vacuum, what happens is, see, all of us were created to be hungry for the Spirit of God. Every single human being is created to be hungry for the Spirit of God. And if we don't allow the Spirit of God to speak to us and be connected to us, it creates a vacuum, and guess what we'll do? We'll start chasing other things, like witchcraft, like tarot cards, and psychics, and all of these things that the Bible expressly says, stay away from them. It's going to lead you down a bad path. We're going to talk about that in a second. But when we don't say, I want you to speak to me and guide me and direct me, that will create a vacuum, and the next thing you know... And anybody see this happening in our culture? The, the lady who comes, the, the Long Island medium, comes here probably once a year. They pack that place out. I went once. It's crazy. People are crying, and they're, like, giving money over hand and foot, and she's got $4,000 shoes on, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Stop there. So, <sighs> that was the Holy Spirit talking to me. I just affirming it, right? See? Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> So false interpretation, it's, there's a lot of good materials out there, but it's got to be biblical. 
It's got to gotta be biblical. So I want to go real quick here, and Roman number two on your outline, four steps to interpret a dream. <clears throat> four steps to interpret a dream. It's not hard. It takes a little practice, but it is possible, and it is super faith-building and motivating and directive if we will apply it. So number one, when you have a dream, the first thing you got to do, and this is really important, is when you have a dream, when you wake up from a dream, you have to think big picture. Don't get caught in a minutia of a dream. Because what happens, and you've all probably done this, you get have a dream, you have some piece of the dream that sticks out to you, and you focus on that, and the rest of the dream kind of fades away, and then you lose it. First thing you got to do is take a, a, a look at the big picture. In other words, was it sunny out? Were you outside? Were you inside? Were you in a car? Were you in a plane? Were there people around? Were there pink elephants flying in the sky? You know, what was the dream? Big picture. Don't get hung up on any details. Because when you think about the big picture and you get a really good grasp of the big picture, then it's easier to remember things which um, are in, in the dream. So, like, super important. Dreams are so often symbolic. This is a problem for us in America because we are educated. Even if you think you're not educated, you are educated. If you can read and write and arithmetic, you are educated. Therefore, we are very literal type people and very materialistic type people. If, it, if I can touch it, I'll believe it. And so symbolism is very difficult for us to comprehend sometimes. And in a dream, here's one example. If you have a dream about a lion, Typically, we go, oh, I had a dream about a lion. I wonder if there's a lion outside my house, and maybe there's going to be a lion coming down the river to get me. That's what we do, literally. But dreams are often, most often, symbolic. So then you take a, 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 the lion, and you symbolically say, what does that represent? What does a lion represent in the Bible? Jesus, right? What else does a, could a lion represent? Authority, strength. What else could it be? Ferocious. So it, it's symbolic to something, and it can help us start to discern the proper um, interpretation of the dream. So big picture. All of these things are very important for us when we, when we start the dream out. Second part, and I'm going real fast here. Second part is, what is the problem in the dream? So once you get the big picture, you look at the problem. What is the problem? Did I crash my car? I stubbed my toe? I fall down the stairs? Did I, was I being chased? What was happening in my dream? What was the problem in my dream? And the reason you want to focus on that is because it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to lead you somewhere. So, so when you think about the pro, a problem in a dream, the danger with a, the problem in the dream is it may not actually be the problem. But because it usually sticks out the most. But, but that's the second part of interpreting a dream is what is the problem in the dream? Okay? Let me see. I thought there was one other thing here. Oh, here's an example. Here's an example. In my dream, I died. Okay, now if you take that literal, how are you going to walk away from that dream? Oh, I'm going to die. You're all going to die. God doesn't need to scare you with it. We all know it. What does death represent in a dream? Usually it means the end of a chapter of your life, end of a season of your life, and something that's about to come. But it's still dealing with that chapter of your life. Same thing with birth or a moving vehicle versus sitting. It's talking about progression in your life. But death usually means this chapter of your life is about to close. And it's, so now you tell me what's more encouraging. Oh, this chapter of my life is supposed to close or I'm going to die. You tell me which one is Jesus. Okay, he doesn't need it again. He doesn't need to scare you with death. We all know that. Matter of fact, we're not supposed to be scared of death anyway. Right? Hello? Okay, good. Good, just checking. So that's number two is, what is the problem in the dream? <clears throat> and the reason that the problem is, you, you, you want to start there is because of number three. What's causing the problem? Usually when we have a dream and we think about the big picture and we think about the problem and then we get to number three, which is what is causing the problem, what we oftentimes do is what we think is the problem is not the problem. It's actually causing the problem. Because a, a problem oftentimes in a dream isn't like glaring. It isn't, it isn't the real issue. It's not trying to say, you're going to die. Right? It's saying that's not the problem. The, in the dream, the, the, what's causing the problem, which is death, that's number three, is you're going to step into what's next in your life. It's, it's causing the problem of you maybe trying to hold on to something that you shouldn't hold on to. 
that season's passing and you want to move on. So what the, the number third step is what is causing the problem. It could be things like um, something in the road that I swerved on or a tornado or a fire or all kinds of different things. And again, these are all meant, most dreams are meant to bring balance in our life. And then the fourth part of interpreting a dream is the solution, if given. A lot of dreams don't give the solution because it's obvious what you should do or what you shouldn't do. But those are the four steps in interpreting a dream. And when you think about interpreting a dream, each one of these steps has to be bathed in prayer. You have to ask God what he thinks about Number one, what, what, is, what is the big picture? What is the problem? What is calling the problem? What is the solution? All of these we need to say, God, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And God, again, his plan is to bring about provision, protection, comfort, and direction for where we're headed in life. So we, we want every stage, every part of the dream to commit to the Lord and ask him about so that we can better understand from his perspective what he's saying to us. And then again, write it down. So like prophecy, dreams are foretelling or foretelling. Most dreams are foretelling. They're trying to bring balance in your life. Some are foretelling about your future. <clears throat> One of the things that I love about prophets, and like Steve Thompson who's coming here for family camp, then he'll be here next Sunday speaking at the 9 and the 10.30, and then at noon, he's going to do a prayer and prophetic service. So if you can come to family camp, man, you won't be sad. It'll be, it'll be great. It's going to be awesome. because It's very prophetic. It's very saturated in God, and he speaks, and there's all kinds of cool stuff that happens. And, and the same thing with the noon service next week. If you want to have somebody pray for you and possibly give you a word about something, that's a great place to do it. But the point is, is <clears throat> sometimes we need help. Sometimes we need other people to bounce things off of, and next weekend... Um, with family camp and with uh, the noon service and even at the 9 and 1030 service, he's going to be sharing. And I encourage you to check it out because it can help us confirm. Listen to this next part here. It can help us confirm if it is God. Is this God? Yes or no. Do you know that you can know if it's God or not? Well, if you didn't, you get to. Roman number three, confirming what God has said. How do we do it? It's not that difficult, but it is a, something we have to practice. Letter A, whenever somebody tells you something, you have a dream, a vision, whatever it is, and you feel like God is speaking to you, you can always be assured of this. Letter A, it will not contradict the Bible or who Jesus is. It will not contradict the Bible or who Jesus is. So if somebody comes to you with some crazy dream that you need to do this thing, and it goes against what the Bible says, like, you need to lie to your wife about your adultery, because Jesus said so. That's the devil. Right? That's, I know that's an extreme situation, but it will not contradict the Bible. It will not contradict the Bible, and it won't put Jesus in a light other than who he is. Are you tracking with me? Three of you? Okay, the rest of you? Do we need to rewind? Okay, okay, good. Okay, now look at this verse under letter A in Deuteronomy chapter 13. If a prophet or one who foretells by dreams appears among you and announces to you a sign or a wonder, and if the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, did you hear that? Did you hear that? The sign or wonder takes place. Well, then it's got to be God, right? Well, let's read on. And the sign or wonder spoken of takes place, and the prophet says, let us follow other gods, gods you have not known, and let us worship them. You must not listen to the words of that prophet or dreamer. Why? The Lord your God is testing you. <gasps> Would God do that? If this is a newsflash for you, God will test you. And it's not fun sometimes. And you know what? He's, usually when he's testing us, he's very, very silent. You ever been in school and they give a test? And you're like, the teacher's sitting up there not saying nothing? Because she's giving you a test. How are you going to do on it? Depends on how good we study, right? If you want to utilize dreams as a way to hear God, then you've got to practice. But listen, it goes on. The Lord your God is testing you to find out whether you love him with all your heart, with all your soul. It is the Lord your God who you must follow. 
and him you must revere. Keep his commands and obey him. Serve and hold fast to him. Why? Because he's a big, mean dictator. No, because he's got the plan. Right? Zhejiang? He's got the plan. Go make a fool of yourself for 100 days. Oh, that ain't nice. And look what came out of it. This is happening in our, our cultural culture. People are listening to psychics and tarot cards and all this other garbage, and they're getting twisted, and their love is waxing cold towards God, towards Jesus. And they're like, well, Jesus is fine, but there's other gods that are just as good, right? That's demonic. So you have to be careful when somebody says, hey, I have a dream, or you have a dream, or something, and if it's not confirmed by the Word of God and by who Jesus is, it's not of him. You just have to reject it, because that will happen. It'll come true, even. It doesn't mean it's of God. This is happening all over around us. Listen, dreams were meant to do three things. There's a lot of things, but three primary things, and you know what it is. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, faith, hope, and love. That's why God speaks to you. That's why he speaks to me. Is he wants to build our faith. He wants to build our hope. And he wants to build our love. And that's what he was going to do through our entire life. The question is, is, how much do you want? Do we want to build our faith? Or do we kind of like, I like pansy faith. <laughs> you need to have a feminine dream. So you can wake up and be like, I'm going to conquer faith. And how about hope? Anybody like hope at all? Well, you know, I'm just kind of pathetic, hopeless. It's just the way I am. Well, quit it. God didn't make you that way. Exchange with that for hope and then love, right? We can all do better at that. Faith, hope, and love. This is God's plan for us in relation to interpreting a dream or a vision or any word from God. Letter B, ask to confirm. Ask two or three loyal, trusted people of prayer. Ask two or three loyal, trusted people of prayer. 2 Corinthians 13, 1, by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Yesterday we had a funeral of a dear friend. I miss him a lot. But I, know, I also rejoice with him. I'm kind of jealous too sometimes. But we had a funeral for him yesterday. It was three hours long of people sharing about him. Longest funeral I've ever been to. It was awesome. It was long though. I was up here, my legs were cramping. I was sitting on a hard stool. But it was incredible. It was story after story of a loyal, trusted person of prayer. Loyal, trusted person of prayer. Can we grow in that? That's God's plan for us. And he was such a dear friend, and, and I, I just, he, that's, he was the epitome of him, and we can all grow in that. Letter C to confirm ask God Himself. To confirm it. Say, God, was that you? Hey, listen, God isn't mad if you ask him, was that you? He's not there going, oh, how dare you talk to me like that. Man, I, I can't believe that you're questioning me. No, he's like, you're really smart to make sure it's me. That's smart. And then to seal it in your mind so you can actually do it. Ask him, was that you? Look at the verse in Isaiah chapter 7. Ask a sign for yourself from the Lord your God. Ask in either the depth or in the height above. In other words, ask anything. It's in the earth, in your dreams, in the sky, in the driving, in your sleeping, in your shower, whatever. Ask for a sign. And he'll reveal it. But again, you have to know how to interpret it or else we can end up down a wrong path. So hopefully these things are helping you. One thing that I love about dreams, and I'll just put it out there, is one of my favorite things to do is interpret dreams. It's so fun. It's so exhilarating. It's so faith building and it's faith building and it's so encouraging. If you ever have a dream that you're like, hey, call the office and say, hey, Kurt, can I talk to you about my dream? Write it down. I would love, it's one of my favorite things to do is sit down and talk to people about their dreams and do the big picture, do the problem, do what's causing the problem, do the solution. And almost every time when I walk away from that conversation with somebody, they walk away and they are jacked up for Jesus. They're pumped up, and they got direction. And they're like, I know what to do now. And I feel really good about it. This is awesome. I didn't even know God was speaking to me like this. But we can all know it. But sometimes we need help. And so if you want to do that, call the office. Say, hey, I got this dream. Write it down. Sit down, and we'll, we'll chat about it. But again, in, in the Bible, it talks about fleeces. 
you know, putting out fleeces as something that's godly. Ask God to confirm it was him, and he will. One other, couple, one other thing. There's so much more we could talk about, but the dreamer, whoever had the dream, is the one who confirms the interpretation, not the interpreter. If somebody comes to me and says, I have a dream, I don't go, well, this is what it means, and you don't believe me, you're dumb. Does that sound like Jesus? No. No, the, the dreamer is the one who affirms. They have the, what's called the aha moment, where you say, you know, I, I just feed back. I go through the, the big picture, go through the problem, what causes the problem, what possible solutions there are, and when they go, bazinga! Like, and if it's faith building, and it's encouraging, and it's full of Jesus, and it's directive, or, or balancing, they walk out of there going, oh, this is awesome. But they're the ones who affirm, not the person who is actually doing the interpretation. But we, again, ask somebody. Ask God. Ask, look in the scriptures. Ask, 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 ask. Matthew 7, 11. If you then who are evil, and the better translation, if you then who are evil, it, it, the, the better translation there is, you then who are human, not divine, not God. Know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more your Father in heaven the divine, the endless one, the timeless one, the limitless one. How much more will he give good things to those who ask? If you need something today, you need some balance, you need some help, you need some strength, start with Jesus. Don't wait till his last choice on the list. Ask him. Ask and you shall receive. All of these things are meant to draw us to Christ, him speaking to us, including dreams and visions. So I hope that this has given you some things to thought about. And maybe if you're here with me and you're saying, you know what, I want to try this stuff. I just want to pray with you quick. So would you close your, bow your heads and we'll pray. God, we come to you and thank you so much that you are so patient and so persistent. You speak to us the same way you always have. And one of those ways is through dreams and visions. And God, you know us. Sometimes we don't pay enough attention to the right stuff. And so I just pray for all of us here. If there's anybody that's in this room or listening, and they're like, you know what, I want to give this stuff a try. Lord, I just pray that they will follow these steps, and it'll all start with Jesus, and the confirmation of Jesus, and the exhortation, and the encouragement from you to build their faith, to build their hope, to build their love, God, that we will know that and that we will practice this. And not just for ourselves, but for others. You want us to be a light to this world. And one of the ways we can do that is through dreams. So Lord, I just pray for all of us here that you'd seal it in us. And Lord, if there's anybody here, if you're here listening to my voice online or whatever, and you're saying, you know what? I don't even have a relationship with Jesus. I've never committed my life to him. And you wanna do that, it's really simple. Just say, yes, Jesus, make me your son, make me your daughter. If you've never done that before, and you say, just do it. Forgive me of my sins. I want to be on your team. I want to be in your family. I want to dig into all this incredible stuff for my life. Just say yes, and he'll take it from there. Or maybe you're listening and you're, you, you've, you were a believer in Jesus at some point, but you've kind of turned away, done your own thing, and you need to recommit. You need to say, you know what, I really... You've tested me in things and I've failed and you're not my first love. I don't love you with all my heart and all my soul. And yet you are my creator, that my savior and you deserve better. I need to recommit. If that's you, just in your heart say, God, forgive me. I want to start fresh. And he will take you right where you're at and he'll move you forward. He is faithful like that. And then lastly, if you're here and you're saying, you know what? I maybe knew about this stuff before. Or, or I've learned about other things and, and I've just kind of learned it and I put it in my head and put it in my back pocket and that's where it stuck. And I never shared it with anybody. And it's time for you to step up and say, I need to get involved. Maybe I need to be like Than who got his license and get my license and preach a sermon. Or maybe it's start a Bible study. Or maybe it's start a prayer group. Or maybe it's send some encouraging text messages or I don't know, whatever. But you know it's your time to step up and to pour out. People need Jesus. Lord, I just pray all of these things, God, we seal them in your blood and in the power of your spirit. 
And we trust it to you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Would you join me as we close with our series verse? And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Joel 2, 28. Have a great week, church. We'll see you next time.